Hi, and welcome to Meet Me in the Movies Open Dialogue. I am Thomas Manning, and I got a really exciting conversation for you guys today, talking with former NFL players and best-selling authors Freddie Stevenson and Delvin Bro about their new documentary, Trials to Triumph, which is based on Freddie's memoir. And uh, Delvin also makes an appearance and discusses some of his stories in this documentary. They both have incredible stories from their lives about things they've overcome to get to the point where they are now. Uh, Freddie, even in his childhood years, struggling with homelessness. And uh, Delvin actually, at, at one point in high school, broke his neck on the football field and came back from that and went on to have a career in the NFL and CFL. So just hearing them both talk about the adversities that they've overcome and uh, you know pushing through everything that life you know, puts in their way, they've continued to find a way. And it's really a beautiful, really inspiring and uh, really honored to have a chance to chat with the both of them. So thank you so much for watching and listening. And I hope you enjoy this conversation talking to Freddie Stevenson and Delvin Bro about the documentary Trials to Triumph. And uh, so, Freddie, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, so I know this documentary was based on your memoir. And uh, can you share a little bit about the process of coming into contact with the directors and producers and I guess, trusting them to help share your story. What was that process like? Yeah, yeah. So um, like it's, it's a crazy story. One of the guys, he was um, partnering with Netflix and put out a lot of different um, documentaries with him. And it's funny because I was doing a back-to-school bash that year, and he just so happened to be giving away book bags in his area for something that he had done in his area. So he was one of the contacts I had for the, for the book bags. And then... Um, one thing led to another while I was talking with him and then, you know, the conversation further along, he looked into my story like, man, and we had a few meetings, like, man, I um, would love to cover your story, you know, put it on a platform, create a um, documentary, but it never, you know, it just never materialized after all those meetings, it never materialized. Um, but then uh, a few months later, some guys from Warner Brothers reached out and one of the guys, he had been with Warner Brothers for, I believe, like 20, 20 or so years. He was trying to branch out and do his own thing, and he just told me that they love my story and they they love the opportunity to create a documentary on my story and you know bring my vision to life on screen. And you know we met for a few months and eventually we started having our interviews. We got a contract signed and we got things rolling. I believe we started the interviews in what 2021. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, 2021, and then we signed the contract at the end of December that year, and then early 2022, we started doing all the, the filming and everything. And uh, Delvin, I know you've also written a memoir, and now you're both taking part in sharing your stories in this documentary and the medium of filmmaking. So can the two of you maybe speak a bit on the similarities and differences in the storytelling process in written memoirs compared to documentary filmmaking? There is, you know, the the book writing process, you know, is a, is a bit different. Um, just especially for me, you know, it's like a, you know, a lot of grinding versus the film. The film, and that for me, it was more comfortable. It kind of got to have more fun throughout the, the process. But the book writing process was kind of, you know, grind, grind, grind. And a lot of people you hear it all the time. I um, hear them tell you, man, if they don't, you know, they've been writing, planning to write books for years and they never got it done. And that's really how the book process is. If you don't like focus in on it and hone down on the process and get it done as fast as possible, then you're, you're most likely never going to get that book written and, and published versus with a, a documentary. You know, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to do. It's exciting to go through every moment and just to see a lot of the different things that um, you get to do through the process. So, I got to enjoy the, the filmmaking process a lot more than I did with the book writing. Um, and I want to say for myself, um, it was I, I just enjoyed the process, man. I enjoyed the moments. Uh, um, I always knew I wanted to tell my, uh, tell my story and everything. And uh, whenever the time came, you know, I was just, you know, I just wanted to just, just, just take it all in. You know, just, just enjoy the process, enjoy the moments because it's something. Um, does the world need to hear? You know, I wanted to make sure I take my time. I wanted to make sure the process was smooth. Um, I didn't rush it or anything. Um, it was very therapeutic for me. So like Freddie said, if, if you want to write a book, don't wait, don't hesitate, go write it. Um, enjoy the process. It's therapeutic. It, it, it can relieve a lot of 
you know, pain and stress that you've been dealing with. So uh, for me, I, I, I would say that. Yeah, and something that really shines through in the documentary is the importance of faith and family for the both of you. And, uh, you know, holding on to those foundations when you're going through your trials. So I'd love to have the two of you share a bit more on what that means for y'all to have this opportunity to show how important faith and family are in your lives and to share that through the documentary. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's really how, you know, coming across really Delvin's story and seeing a lot of a lot of the things that he, he went through on um, just kind of getting to this process. One thing I wanted to do different from, from the book is tell other people's stories as well and not just mine. Um, just to show all different angles um, in life, like so many different people are going through so many different situations, but ultimately showing people how you can come, come out of those places and just seeing stories like, like Delvin's, myself, and the rest of the cast. I truly believe that everybody that, that watches this film, they're going to be able to pick something, pick something, take something away from this film, find, find some inspiration, find some purpose, and truly come with the theme that no matter what I'm going through, I can overcome it. And that's really the, you know, the theme that I wanted to get across in this film. And Delvin, he's a guy, you know, I came across years ago on social media and I was just following his story and I fell, fell in love with it. And I've been telling him since day one, it's like, I was hoping that, you know, from afar, like, I hope that somebody turns this film, his story into a, a film. And, you know, I don't know how it did happen, but once we got the opportunity to link up, it's like, man, let's do it. And I truly believe that this film is going to be something that, you know, impacts the world. And uh, Delvin, anything uh, you want to add from your perspective there? Uh, uh, yeah, um, just ha having faith in uh, uh, um, in family throughout the process is big. I mean, because when you go, when you be in those spaces to where you don't, you you can't really think for yourself or you need help. You know, family is big there. You know, you can reach out to your your, your brother, your mom, or, or some close friends. So having having the family members throughout the process for me was um was, was definitely uh pretty awesome man because like i said when i was going through a lot of the trauma you know i didn't have my family and now that i've reached out to them and talked to them uh, you know about my story and how i feel they became more closer or we all became more closer so um you know i think that's big and also having faith too right believing that anything is possible uh despite what you're going through despite what adversity you have, you know, you just got to have faith and believe that everything is going to work out for the better. Um, you know, don't hang your head on it. Just just know that it's going to uh, work out and, and, and you have to work towards it. And uh, another another theme in the documentary and in your memoir is the concept of life after football. Uh, I know you've each had times in your life where you realized that football wasn't going to play the same role for you that you originally thought it would. And of course, you're still both plugged into that world in many aspects. But in this doc, you both talk about going through something of an identity crisis when football was taken away from you at different points. So in working through these adversities and uh, you both learn to use your gifts and even discover discover new gifts within you, you know, what's the most surprising thing that you've learned about yourself during this process? Uh, and Freddie, you can uh, take this one first if you'd like. Yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely tough. And just athletes going through that transition, I don't care if you, you know, have a 20-year career, it's going to be tough for every person you dedicate that many years of your life to something. It kind of becomes your identity, you know, especially um, when you, to be at that level, to make it to the highest of levels, you have to block out all the noise and commit every part of you to it. So once that's gone and all these things that you blocked out, potential opportunities that you, you know, pass on just so you can focus solely on the game. Um, now you're trying to figure out how to take, you know, take advantage of these opportunities. What's, what's, what's best for you? Um, what's your true identity outside of the game? So I say one thing that I took away from that, um, you know, just the biggest thing, it was kind of like a cliche corny, but just really, you know, peace. Um, that's the biggest thing I, I, I got from, you know, that journey. It was, it was tough, but um, through that time, it was it was dark to me. Um, I didn't truly know what my, my purpose was outside of the game, but just finding, you know, once I started speaking and doing different things and feeling a, a sense of purpose, a sense of peace, doing those things, knowing that I was giving back and telling my story to help other people, um, I started to feel a sense of purpose and peace through that. And it was different, you know, just, 
scoring a touchdown, you know, making a big hit. That's that's a thrill, winning championships. But the peace and the purpose that I felt from doing this in the stage, that's, I never thought that I'd feel that feeling again. So that's one thing I took from, you know, the transition, just finding that peace and, and the grind and the process of getting there. It took a while, though, but it feels great. Uh, yeah. And uh, for myself, I want to say the transition was was just being able to trust myself more. That's that's what I got out of it. Uh, trusting myself more throughout, you know, all the injuries and, um, you know, believing believing in myself and having, you know, gone through the situation at the Saints and, 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 and you know, being out the league and having to figure it out, having to find a way, having to find another alternate route throughout the the process, you know, I, you know, just trusting myself, you know, I, when you believe in yourself and you trust yourself, a lot of things, a lot of great things come from it. And uh, that's what I want to say. I want to say the biggest transition for me was just trusting myself more and more as the journey, you know, came with adversity, right? When the journey came with more happy moments, when it came with more sad moments, right? I just was able to trust myself more. And now I can take that into life outside of the game. You know what I'm saying? Just trusting myself, believing that everything, like I said, is going to work itself out and going with it. And uh, I know the two of you are both advocates for mental health. And I think in recent years, uh, this is an issue that's really been brought into the light, and especially with mental health in the world of professional athletes. And there's been some, definitely some progress made, some steps in the right direction, but there's obviously a lot of progress to be made. Uh, so there's two parts to this question uh, for the both of you. What are you most proud of in regard to the strides that have been made with these conversations, but also where are some aspects that you hope to still see some improvement? Um, yeah, um, just one starting off, you know, just the fact that the conversations are being had um, and that will kind of, you know, lead right into my, my second one. The thing that you want to see happen from this point on, you know, is just more people getting comfortable having those conversations to, because in the past, the reason the conversations weren't being had is because especially as men um, and in sports, you, you're taught to, you know, to be, be macho, showing your emotion is, is weak. And that's why a lot, of, a lot of people, when they were having these issues, they never spoke up about them. And they were, you know, just high, dealing with these things behind closed doors and weren't getting the true help that they needed to get. And now, of course, now that the conversations are being had, more people are going to be willing to speak out, but then you're still going to have those people, you know, that are scared to take that step forward and, that's a big theme in the film, finding your voice. And a lot of us, you know, I appreciate every single person being vulnerable on screen and just telling their stories. Um, so much, you know, trauma that every single person has went through individually. And just people in the world being comfortable having those conversations, no matter what background that you come from. Um, like like Devin said earlier, it's therapeutic. Just being able to, like when you write a book, just being able to write it down, and, you know, talk about that pain. It releases some of that trauma or standing on screen to just, confiding in someone and letting them know that what you're dealing with and you never know how that would be able to impact your life so just more people having that conversation is the thing that I say going forward we need to have yeah man um yeah I, man listen I love talking about mental health um just because you get to be different you know what I'm saying you get to be different from a lot of people because you you know you've been brought up so you've been brought up to be taught one way right like you can't be can't be weak, can't be weak minded, you know, boys, you ain't supposed to cry. You're supposed to be provided. You're supposed to be all this, but man, what, what, what about, you know, your emotions? What about, you know, your feelings? What about, you know, your sad moments throughout the day or throughout uh, a moment, man, it's okay to cry. You know, just don't wear your pride on your sleeve. You know, that's, that's, that's the biggest thing for me. We, us men, we are uh, people in general, you know, we, we, we wear a lot of pride on our sleeve. We don't want to be told nothing. We don't want to be helped. We don't want to ask for help. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and just because of what we've been taught as as kids growing up, you know, especially my my parents or whatever, it was, it was always about tough love. You know what I'm saying? And, and nothing mental, nothing is wrong with you. Everything is is fine. You're perfect. Like like man, no, I, I just know something is wrong. And 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 the conversations moving forward, I feel like we all need to have that that outlet, somebody to reach out to, somebody that they can go to. Uh, whenever they're going through uh, mental disturbance, because we need that, you know, every, everybody need that. everybody need an outlet for someone to reach out to that give them that comfort, right? That that makes them feel safe, right? Um, and, and I think moving forward, we need to have more of those people come forward to to be that for 
uh, other people that are going through uh, mental depression. And uh, going off that, uh, Freddie, something you spoke about in the documentary that really stuck with me. Uh, basically, you said that you might not be able to reach everybody in the world, but you can reach at least one person on a daily basis. And that's a mindset that I really connect with and I try to live out in my own life. So how has that attitude continue to play a part in the way you approach your own life and interact with other people? Yeah, I mean, um, it was, you know, just something I learned from trial and error through this, you know, this journey of self-discovery after my playing career came to the end. You know, when you you start out as an entrepreneur, you everybody in their head is like, man, my brand is going to take off from day one. Like, before I even wrote the book, I had like a clothing brand. I was selling T-shirts. So first day you jump out, you're like, oh, I'm going to sell this many T-shirts. Like, you're ambitious. But the reality is it's not just going to play itself out like that. You may have one person buy a T-shirt here, and if they like the the, the clothing and everything that it, um, the brand provides, they may go tell a few other people. And that's ultimately how it works. Like when you when you're telling your story, being vulnerable, um, you impact the life. You've done the job. You you saved you saved the person, impacted their life, um, giving them a sense of purpose. It's all the things you want people to get from this film. Um, help them believe that they can overcome any obstacle. That's one person. You've done your job. But if they go spread that message to a few other people, now you're helping even more people. So, But you can't do that without impacting that person first. And I think sometimes we kind of lose that trying to spread ourselves too wide. It's just ultimately, you're just reaching out to that one person. You never know what they may be going through. And if you truly, you know, were vulnerable with them and, you know, uh, made an impact on their life, that message is going to spread further than you could have ever imagined. Man, absolutely. You know, absolutely, man. I make uh, I make little posts um on my um on my Instagram accounts and Twitter accounts and social media accounts. You know, I, you know, it's just because I don't feel like a lot of people are getting that that message. And I feel like if I, I can, if I can just inspire one person a day, and that's why I say I appreciate Freddie, because he, you know, somehow we connected. Well, you know, somehow it's just through the divine connection we connected. But it's only one person. You know what I'm saying? And he you know, inspired me to continue to keep telling my story, just seeing him share hands. I'm like, man, I, I, I want to do it, but I want to go big. I want to see if I can inspire millions in a day. But then I say, you know what? I can't get everybody. So let me just do one. Let me make one post and see, you know, how many people, you know, can can understand this message, how, how many people can take this message and go about on their day or go about on their journey. Right. And it's just inspiring because if we can inspire one person, then that person can inspire, then that person can inspire. Now, look at how many people you have inspired, four or five people within just that one person. So, man, I think it's awesome, man. And I, I try to do it every day. Like I say, I see Freddie uh, doing it as well, man. And that's I think it's awesome. We need more people to do that. We need more people to inspire, um, you know, on a daily basis. And that's how we're going to uh, get this thing going. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I have you know, kept up with the two of you and it always is awesome to see everything that you're sharing and sharing your own stories from your life and how that's connecting with people around the world. So I really do appreciate the two of you and uh, thanks so much for two of you for taking the time for this. And, uh, you know, Freddie, I'll let you uh, share a little bit for our audience out there. Where can they find the documentary and where can they find your memoir? Um, yeah, yeah, the documentary, go find it, it's streaming now on Amazon Prime, Apple TV, and, and a lot of a lot of the other digital platforms. If you have um, Spectrum TV, whatever your um, cable network is, it's streaming on all TV on demand platforms right now. You can go find it everywhere. So go in your, on your, your Google, whatever you need to do, type in Trials of Triumph, and it's popping up everywhere. So make sure you go check it out. And if you want to check out the book, it's on Amazon as well. Awesome. And uh, Delvin, I know you've written a book as well. So uh, where can people find you and find your work? Yeah, yeah man. Um, it's on my website, uh, broshow.com, or you can go Amazon or Barnes & Noble. It's called Unbroken, U-N-B-R-E-A-U-X-K-E-N. Y'all go check it out. Well, thanks again, uh, Freddie and Delvin. It really was a pleasure. And Thanks so much for your time. And I'd love to get another chance to talk to you sometime down the line. I know y'all are always working on something. So uh, thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate you, yes, sir. And, yeah, um, yeah. We're looking forward, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow's a big, the big day, you know, just 
excited about this process and we truly believe um, this film is going to impact a lot of lives, save a lot of lives, and <laughs> it blow our minds. We expect it to be successful, but throughout this whole entire pr process, I know me, Devin and myself can, can say, man, even the expectations we set out for our project, um, we didn't expect it to do what, what it went on to do. So that's what we're expecting to do with this. So um, we're just excited, man. We appreciate you for having us. Man, my pleasure, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, I hope you all have a great day and I'll uh, talk to you soon. Yes, sir. I see the unbroken book back there, man. Yeah, yes, I had to, had to get it out. Yep, yep. Yes, <laughs> Appreciate yep. you, man. Thank you, oh, Tom. Yeah, yeah I'll all see right, you Freddy, guys. Brother.